So today we're going to learn about hair and makeup from the 1940s. Um, so what's really unique and interesting about the 1940s is that we start to see women um, kind of have this shift in gender roles um, because of World War II. So this is where the idea of Rosie the Riveter was born, right? So all of these women are starting to work in factories. Um, they're starting to take on these more masculine roles. They're showing that um, they're just as strong as men, they're just as capable as men, but you'll notice in a lot of these photos and like advertisements and things that we have from this period, they're still very feminine. Um, so even though they're taking on these more masculine jobs, they aren't necessarily losing any of their femininity, um, which I think is very interesting. Um, another thing that comes from this time period are pinup girls. Um, most of us are really familiar with the pinup girl style. It's still something that a lot of people um, utilize in their everyday fashion. It's a word we throw around a lot. So this sort of not necessarily originated because there are um, earlier mentions of like women in calendars and like Gibson girls. Um, but the 40s is when you really do start to see um, the idea of like the pinup girl come to light and it becomes a lot more of like a popular idea. Um, Hollywood was a huge influence, just like it was in the 30s. That does not go away in the 1940s. Um, people still really looked to the glamour of Hollywood um, to kind of like dictate what their overall styles are. So some really big people from this period, um, as far as like Hollywood was concerned, um, we have Rita Hayworth, um, Hilda Sims, Veronica Lake, um, Cary Grant. He's a big one, Humphrey Bogart, Duke Ellington, um, tons of people, but those are just a few of the ones that like, um, really when you think of the 40s, those are some of the people that really um, come to light. Um, so as far as makeup goes in the 1940s, a lot of things were actually really scarce because of World War II. Um, but one of the things that was still really being produced was lipstick, um, in particular red lipstick. So red lipstick was pretty much like the most iconic beauty item um, that's going to come out of the 1940s. So if you only remember one thing about the 1940s in makeup, uh, remember the red lipstick. It's really, really important. Um, it's one of the only things a lot of people could have. And again, you know, they're doing these really um, traditionally masculine jobs, but you'll still see, probably still see women in lipstick and see women with their hair done. So it was just like one more way um, for women to still have their femininity while having to take on things that are kind of outside of like the traditional gender role that they were used to fulfilling. Um, um, the 1940s overall though, like aside from the lipstick, it was still a very, um, kind of like natural look, especially when you kind of like look back to like the 1920s and some things that we had seen in the past. Um, eyebrows were finally getting to be like a little bit more natural. Um, natural eye makeup colors were worn more. People weren't necessarily wearing like tons of blush. Um, obviously this kind of differs when you do get into like some of the pinup ideas. Um, but, um, Overall, it's going to be a little bit more natural um, while still kind of having that hint of glamour, but it's going to be more of a natural look um, than maybe we've been used to seeing in different time periods. Um, kind of a fun fact, because makeup was in such short supply, um, women in the 40s would even kind of like resort to using things that they probably shouldn't have been using um, as mascara. So boot polish, that's like one example that they would try to use for mascara, right? Um, so like I said, there's not a lot of things being produced, so maybe they got a little bit more inventive then was safe, um, but just kind of like a little fun fact about that, right? Um, as far as hair goes in the 1940s, so um, usually women were kind of wearing it a lot longer, so you'll kind of see um, in the 20s, hair got really short, right? And then in the 30s, like, okay, like we started to grow it out a little bit. Um, and now in the 40s, you see women like really starting to grow their hair a lot longer. Um, they have very luxurious waves, thanks to people like um, Veronica Lake um, and Rita Hayworth that kind of had this like peekaboo hairstyle where like, you know, one of their eyes is mysteriously covered by their hair. Um, one of them was blonde, one of them was a redhead. Blonde was still um, a very popular hair color. Um, a lot of it was because of Veronica Lake. Um, but yeah, so this really long wavy hair is really popular. But what women were starting to see is that like, okay, great, that's perfect for Hollywood, but in my everyday life, I'm working in a factory what if my hair gets stuck? Um, which is terrifying to think about, but it's a very realistic thing to think about. Um, so Veronica Lake actually like changed the way that she would normally wear her hair. So instead of having her like long wavy hair covering part of her face, she actually um, started to wear it up a little bit more. And because she made that change, women in factories started to make that change too. So you can see um, how big of like an impact people in Hollywood can have like obviously I'm sure there were people that were wearing their hair up before her um but when someone like that and I think we still see it like in today's um society too when somebody in Hollywood who's influential makes a decision it kind of will prompt the rest of us 
um, to do the same thing. So it's interesting to see that those kinds of things were still true then, um, and they are true now still too, right? Um, so this is kind of where our like Rosie the Riveter idea came from, is like once women in factories started to wear their hair up, um, she was kind of born, right? That whole idea um, where she's still really glamorous, but she's super strong, she's working hard, um, and her hair is up, and not gonna get cut in, caught in any of the machines or anything. Um, snoods and scarves and bandanas started to be worn just to kind of keep the hair back. Um, but of course, because we still loved Hollywood glamour, um, we started to make things a little bit more elaborate, right? So it wasn't enough to just kind of like have her hair up and updos while we were working. Um, no, of course, we're gonna make it super elaborate. Um, so people would start to do things where they'd have like tons of curls on the top of their head. Um, curly bangs are really popular. That's something you're gonna see from um, pinup girl Betty Grable. Um, she was really popular for that hairstyle. Um, victory rolls, that also became popular because again, why do we just put our hair back when we can do something fancy with it, right? Because we love our Hollywood glamour. Um, so that's where victory rolls came in, which if you're not familiar with that, that's essentially where um, the hair is gonna be like rolled backwards. And traditionally it's all kind of rolled backwards into a V. A lot of times now I think we see it where it's just like the front of the hair um, that's put into the little rolls. But um, essentially it used to be that everything would kind of go down into like a V shape with them. Um, so that's one like iconic hair period, um, hairstyle that we got from this period. Um, because people love to have all these like crazy curls and buns and things um, to kind of like accentuate the updos that they were all kind of more or less like having to wear now um, because of their work. Sometimes, sometimes people use like fake hair pieces. Um, so that's something that um, we still do today, right? So plenty of people do things like that. Um, and that's something they were doing back then. Um, wigs were not necessarily as popular for people to wear um, as far as like fashion is concerned. So they actually referred to them um, as transformations a lot, um, which I find really entertaining. I think that's a kind of a fun word to think about um, and to use for something, but I don't know if you all feel that way or not. Um, so as far as um, men's hair is gonna go in this period, so the men pretty much kept it very, um, military and conservative for a lot of the times you know you weren't really necessarily seeing a lot of men like grow their hair long yet um we haven't really gotten to that point in time yet so for the most part um military regulations for shorter hair um those are going to be obeyed one thing that um, a lot of men in hollywood started to do though yes they might have the shorter hair um but they started to kind of play with like the natural wave um that was in their hair and to achieve that um they would sometimes use like hair product and everything to comb their hair into certain ways so that they'd have this really nice um, kind of like wave formed at the front of their hair. Um, as far as facial hair went, it wasn't a huge period for facial hair. If anything, you would see like a really thin like pencil mustache. Um, Clark Gable was still a really big deal um, in the 1940s, so you can kind of look to him if you're looking for that sort of like um, iconic 1940s man um, kind of look. Clark Gable definitely had that going on. Um, so again, even though um, military was a huge thing during this time period, and we're fill it, like fulfilling all of our military regulations, we're still um, kind of going by what Hollywood says too. So it's really interesting to see like the 40s were really like a time of um, fashion and function, right? Like we did things because we had to do them, but we also want to make sure that we're still looking glamorous um, while we're doing things. Um, so that's just kind of like a little preview about the 1940s. Um, hopefully you enjoyed learning about it.